discussing for use of wedge handicaps and its sociological history. So um, check out my other video as I was talking all about that. I won't recap that here because this is a follow on. Um, so in my view, as I now have researched the word handicapped and I've discovered that there was nothing inherently offensive about it and the only reason it was deemed offensive was because those with disability rights movement rejected it as a term that had been imposed on them by others and as part of a kind of way in which they were rejecting a sort of um, power over their lives. I would actually say that personally, I actually quite like the word handicapped. And I've been thinking that as part of my own self-liberation, <laughs> get it? <laughs> as part of my own self-liberation, as an autistic person, who is handicapped, because I am slowed down by a burden I was born with. There's nothing wrong with me. This is a burden I was born with, including my autism and my mental health problems, um, which means my brain is different, and therefore I get more stressed more easily. I find life harder to deal with. I am handicapped. I am burdened by things outside of my control. I like the word handicapped. I actually find it's more neutral than the term disabled. Now, I don't have a problem with the word disabled. I think it's infinitely better than the words um, that are used as euphemisms in its place. Um, you know, when I was at school, I was described as having special educational needs. Now, that term, special educational needs, is even as a kid, and I didn't even really know what it meant, knew what it meant, but even as a kid, I thought that that designation, special education needs, was offensive. I didn't really understand why, but it sounds offensive. There's something about it that sounds offensive. Um, it kind of singles you, it separates you from others, really. Um, but that might well be the problem with any word that we're given. So that could, could have been the same with the word handicap, you know, because words obviously take on particular connotations, and that's the language problem, we can't really escape that. And also, before I knew what disability meant and before I knew the kind of sociological history of the term, I, I didn't like the word disability either because I, I don't think I had been educated on what it meant when I was told I had an... Oh, no, because this was before I was diagnosed autistic. But when I was told I had a disability, I was confused because I thought that disability meant you were physically disabled because, you know, that's what I thought disability was. So I was confused and I also thought it meant something very negative and... Because that's the kind of message that society sends connected to that word. But as I became more enlightened and older, and um, particularly after my autism diagnosis, and I educated myself on what these words really mean, I now actually am perfectly happy with the word disabled. It's factual. It just, I am disabled. I'm not going to deny the facts. You know, I like to call a spade a spade. And disability is to the point. And why hide reality? That's quite, in, in a way, hiding reality is quite an adolescent approach. I do think a sign of maturity is when you can face the facts head on. Some people don't seem to come out of this uh, infantile stage and they want to carry on using euphemisms. I actually think it's a sign of maturity when you start facing the facts. And I actually find it actually helps you grow. And, um, and actually fighting the facts and trying to sugarcoat things, I actually find is actually a recipe for poor mental health. Actually, facing the facts, not using euphemisms, is, I think, far more psychologically healthy. Because then you have less kind of cognitive dissonance. You're not trying to pretend something is the case when it isn't. Um, so, yeah, so now I'm perfectly happy with the word disability. But, and I don't like the word special at all, it's a horrible word, but... Um, I mean, in the context it's used, there's nothing wrong with the word special um, in other contexts, but yeah. But in terms of um, the word um, handicapped, I actually find that I do slightly prefer it to the word disability. And I was mainly because, you know, it just sounds more neutral. Um, but if you think about what disability means, it literally means incapable. Now, in some areas, I am literally incapable. I am incapable of working. I'm not going to try and beat around the bush about that. It's a fact. I'm never going to be able to work like a normal person. I'm never going to have a job, basically. I can do, um, you know, voluntary stuff, but I'm never going to be able to have, like, a paid job like normal people have. In that respect, yes, I am disabled. There's no beating about the bush there. I am disabled. I'm not able to do that.
So in some areas of my life, yeah, I am disabled. In other areas of my life, I'm more handicapped. In other words, I can do things, um, but it's going to take me longer to do them. I might need to do them a different way to normal people. I might be slower. Um, I might need to find workarounds. I might find it more stressful, but I can do it. It just takes me longer and, um, you know, takes more time. So I am both disabled and handicapped, but I don't see any, and, it, and obviously in some areas I'm even, I'm, 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 I'm advanced and I, and I have, um, like, you know, my word recognition skills, for example, are, are superior to many people. So, you know, um, but yeah, I am both disabled and handicapped in many areas of my life. Um, and that's not a bad thing. That's not negative. That doesn't mean I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not down about that. You know, that's what I was saying earlier about ironically actually facing the facts mean, makes you actually, gives you better mental health. It doesn't mean you think, oh, where is me? I can't do things. I taught myself to knit for crying out loud. I have a handicap in, de de in skills requiring dexterity. Does that mean I'm going to not try and knit? God, no. I went and, you know, I knit. It might take me longer than a normal person to figure these things out. That's what I mean about being handicapped. But that's not a bad thing. It just means it takes me a little bit longer. Um, so actually... Some people say, they say, oh, you're being all negative, we mustn't define it by the negatives. And I'm like, oh, yeah, whatever. I can define myself how I pretty well want. That is self-liberation. Um, you know, at the end of the day, that's liberation. It's what works for you, isn't it? And um, it actually has the converse of a negative attitude because by facing the facts, you're not, you're not, you're not deceiving yourself. Um... So it actually aids a positive attitude, actually, because you're aware of your limitations, you're also aware of your strengths. You're aware it might take you longer to achieve certain things, but with the right attitude, you're not going to stop trying, basically. Um, but you're also aware of certain things that you'll never be able to do. And is that a negative attitude? No, that's realism. And I do think there's a problem, actually, particularly in the Western world, of this kind of uber-positivism, I think it's an American neoliberal thing, where you're never allowed to admit negatives. You're never allowed to admit weaknesses. It always goes against the grain of capitalism to admit that you might have a flaw. So I actually say it's radical. It's, yeah, maybe a bit perverse, but it's radical. It's maybe seditious. And uh, to actually call a spade a spade in this euphemistic, uber-positive society and to actually go against the grain and to use words that might offend certain people. But like, as I said before, that's the problem with capitalist society in its late stage, is that everything is offensive, but nothing is, um, but nothing is important. It seems that's the, what, what it is. So things that are important aren't taken seriously, but everything is offensive. Um, so actually using real words to describe things is actually anti-capitalist. Because um, that's what late day capitalism is all about, sugarcoating, advertising massaging, uh, making something positive that isn't positive. So by actually admitting you're disabled, admitting you're handicapped, is a sign of rebellion. So thank you for listening.